Alright guys, it is a lovely fall evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We are back in the Point Lonesome Swamp and the oasis of freedom here on this lovely, it is a Monday night here in Point Lonesome. That would be, I think, November 22nd. 2021. So anyway, guys, this is going to be kind of a schizophrenic video, I guess, uh, because I'm, I'm receiving these articles, these two different articles about breeding, about whether particularly I think millennials are having more babies or fewer babies. Which is it? Uh, so anyway, several of you have sent me this article from the New York Times titled, To Breed or Not to Breed? Well, you know, uh, you know my answer on that question, uh, and we're going to read part of that, you know, talking about, but, but the problem is I have had this rant uh, before, this, this, the closest that I personally ever get to hopium and apocalyptimism that a few people out there are figuring out how doomed we are and making the only appropriate response at this point. And that is to not breed. And I uh, say so you read this New York, and I, I've, I've, I've been reading articles like this for the past couple of years. The New York Times finally weighing in on it and we're gonna so I'm, I'm gonna see how the New York Times is playing this uh, read bits and pieces of the of to breed or not to breed and then we're gonna have a reality check uh, that everything uh, that this New York Times article says uh, according to other analysts of the breeding situation particularly with millennials, is uh, comes up with uh, a, a more what I think is a realistic conclusion uh, that we very well might be facing a baby boom as a tiny few people uh, understand how doomed we are, not having, deciding not to breed. The statistics are out there, you know, they say, do they say statistics don't lie? Uh, but anyway, uh, let's check in with how the New York Times is playing this story. I have to, uh, you know, wear two pairs of glasses now. I finally reached the point. All right, so I got two pairs of glasses on to read this. <clears throat> And so uh, I, I'm not. I'm going to put the link on here. If you haven't read this already, you know it's a good article and good for the New York Times. You know they start. You know they interview various people, mostly women, uh, about their decision not to have children after they have figured out how screwed their kids will be. You know, with a little bit of other research. Um, So they start out with talking to a 30-year-old married woman uh, and her well, a couple. The couple sees mounting disaster when reading the latest climate change reports and Arctic ice forms. Anxiety about having children has set in. Yes, quote, over the last year I thought, oh my God, I have to make a decision. It's not that far away, but I don't know how I could change my mind. Over the next 10 years, I feel like there are only going to be more reasons to not want to have a kid, not the other way around, close quote. Uh, and such fears are not necessarily unfounded Every new human comes with a carbon footprint. 
And of course, even the New York Times does not understand the difference between a carbon footprint and an ecological footprint. Every new human comes with a carbon footprint and all the other aspects of the ecological footprint. And then interestingly, this is the New York Times in a note to investors this past summer, Morgan Stanley analysts concluded that the quote movement to not have children owing to fears over climate change is growing and impacting fertility rates quicker than any preceding trend in the field of fertility decline. Hallelujah. Movement to not have children owing to fears over climate change. So anyway, guys, since I understand, damn mosquito, uh, since I understand that about six people are going to make it to the second story, I'm going to break in right here because I've had this rant before. I'm going to come back to this story, but this is a good time to uh, break in to read the story that the New York Times had no interest in mentioning. So they talk about this Morgan Stanley uh, analysis, uh, but we're going to move over from uh, the New York Times to the Financial Post. And guys, there, you know, they, they illustrate this story, you know, with a truly horrific photograph. I, you know, I, I, I don't want to upset uh, my, my own listeners, but I, I think, I, 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 I think that uh, sometimes you just have to stare horror in the face. So, you, if, 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 if if you have a queasy stomach or, or whatever, uh, just, just fast forward. I just want to show you. This is from the Financial Post. And this is the most terrifying uh, photograph that I personally have seen in a long time. See what you think if you agree with me that uh, here is the single biggest threat to the planet. Uh, hands down, no contest, the single biggest threat to the planet. And you have to go to the financial post. So what is the thousand words behind that horrific photo? Okay, from the financial post, Post haste, move over boomers, a new millennial baby boom could be on its way. Learn how investors can tap into the coming baby wave. Yes, so uh, if you did not realize this, after this much ballyhooed decline in birth rates in 2020, Okay, we, we, all of this press about the declining birth rates and how uh, the, the, the humanity is doomed. After a decline in 2020, live births increased 3.3%. In June of this year, the highest growth in, you know, in breeding since 2013 and that's not going to change. <clears throat> Last time this happened, soldiers were returning from the Second World War. The resulting baby boom between 1946 and 1964, that would include me, created the largest generational group in North American history, which has had and continues to have an outsized impact on society and the economy, not to mention the planet. Well, move over, boomers. There could be a new baby boom in town. 
So we just heard from Morgan Stanley over at New York Times. So now, what does Bank of America Global Research say about the subject? Bank of America Global Research believes that millennials, those, um, you know, the children of boomers born between 1981 and 1994 and now the largest age demographic in the U.S. and Canada will drive a baby boom beginning this year in 2021 and will only continue to grow. Did I? God damn it! Anyway, there is no insect apocalypse in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Uh, <clears throat> rising rising birth rates, an increase in pregnancy test sales, and Bank of America's own consumer spending survey back up the claim by a group of Bank of America analysts led by some fellow by the name of Robert Ohms. After a, a decline in 2020, live births, you know, they turned around in June, rising 3%, the highest growth rate in eight years. Uh, pregnancy test sales are up 13% since last year, according to data from Nielsen and Bank of America Research. That compares with an average increase of 2% over the years from 2016 to 2019, pregnancy test sales up 13 percent. Um, Bank of America's own consumer spending survey short showed more people are expecting or trying to have a baby over the next year, reaching an all time high for that survey. More than 22% of respondents said they were planning on buying a home in the next year, while 11% were expecting or trying to have a baby. And data from the Pew Research Center supports this. In 2019, Millennials surpassed baby boomers as America's largest living adult generation, numbering 72.1 million. Now, the large, now they have passed the boomers. The millennial generation is expected to expand as young immigrants come to North America, while boomers' numbers are shrinking. With immigration adding even more numbers to the millennial group than any other, millennials are expected to peak in the year 2033 at 74.9 million uh, you know, potential breeders out there. And then, of course, they go from here looking at all the celebrating, mean, of course, Financial Post is celebrating this, that this is good. You understand this is Financial Post. It's a bunch of economists and investors, you know, trying to make money off the collapse of a planet. And this is absolutely the best news. Uh, that, that, you know, this is a good news article in the Financial Post because the planet has nothing to do with any of this. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to hear the words climate change, carbon footprint, ecological footprint. You sure as shit are never going to hear the word overpopulation in either of these articles. Okay. There are any number of ways a baby boom could change society and the economy in the years ahead, but for investing purposes, Bank of America identifies two sectors that could see an impact in the next term, housing and retail. And uh, 
I need to break in here. I am selling this beautiful place. If there are any millennial, uh, any millennials out there that want a a wonderful place to uh, have six or seven bouncing little bundles of joy, I want to hear from you at collapsechronicles at gmail.com. I have a place for your new family. Uh, you better believe I would absolutely love to have a millennial couple with a bunch of kids show up uh, here tomorrow. Anyway, housing and retail. Uh, quoting the uh, report, uh, more folks having babies and buying homes spells good news for home builders and building products. Uh, can you say Home Depot, Lowe's, all of the big box stores? Um, the same, uh, what's true here in the U.S., same uh, research is showing up in Canada. Uh, there you go. Uh, don't forget changing lifestyles such as remote work are all pitching into this. Other big winners will be grocery stores, big box stores like Walmart and Target, and warehouse clubs like Costco as millennials buy homes and set up households, said the research. And then uh, right after that story, storm of the century sinks supply chain. Yes. <laughs> right, after, right after that story, storm of the century sinks supply chain. Gotta love it. So anyway, so now we're going to go back to the New York Times, to breed or not to breed after we got a dose of reality. Uh, I hate to do this, but I can't resist. It's just, just one more look at the biggest threat to planet Earth on the planet. Alright, so we're now going to go back to the New York Times um, uh, in this long involved article, I, I'm going to put the link to this on there. Uh, you know, a lot of this we've already talked about, so I'm trying to find a little bit of new information. So the concern, the con ma mainly talking about when they say the concern is mostly climate change, uh, seems to be gaining traction. Among childless adults in the United States survey, surveyed by Morning Consult last year, one in four, that's 25% cited climate change as a factor in why they do not currently have children. Uh, And then in another, that's similar to another poll in 2018, uh, showed, let's see, 33% listed climate change, and, and unbelievably, 27% named population growth. Population growth as a concern and the reason for not having children. Yes, while economic concerns still remained paramount with 64% citing the high cost of child care, uh, that, that's the big one, is just the cost of raising these little, th these little monsters. Uh, while that still is the big ticket, 37% uh, of childless couples cited global instability 
and 36% cited domestic policy. Uh, domestic politics and then of course uh, in 2020 the birth rate in the US declined for the sixth straight year okay so the New York Times a week after the financial the, 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 okay the writers and the editors uh, of the New York Times knew damn well that the uh, the declining birth rate turned around, uh, what is it, five, four or five months ago, that the declining birth rate switched and started climbing again. No mention anywhere in this story of that information in the uh, in, in the uh, financial post story. It just makes you kind of wonder, uh, you know, and then they, of course, spiraling housing costs, college debt burdens, all this other stuff, are, are, you know, all of this is weighing in, but there's, you know, looking at doomers here. So what else do we have on this list of reasons not to, uh, not to breed? <clears throat> A rise in political extremism at home and abroad, thousand-year floods that wiped out Western European towns, West Coast wildfires that grow more un 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 unimaginable in scale each summer. Faced with such alarming news, some prospective parents wonder how harmful might it be to bring a child into the literal and figurative environment? And then they, uh, they interview another 30-year-old woman from Canada. Uh, quote, uh, Well, anyway, guys, this is a long and involved article. Uh, then they talk about uh, being the New York Times. You know, these views from from these doomer chicks basically do not always travel across lines of geography, politics, or social class. Uh, it's the educated professionals. Uh, yes, uh, the people who cited climate change as a reason to have fewer children were significantly more likely to be college educated and Democrats, slightly more likely to be white, non-religious, and high earners. Uh, Regardless of all of these, regardless of all this, such questions are creeping, you know, about the, the end of the world, are creeping into the cultural dialogue in a manner that recalls the hippie area, the hippie era ecology movement when the population bomb, the seismic 1968 bestseller by biologist Paul Ehrlich predicted a barren, exhausted planet where hundreds of millions would die in famines during the 1970s. And of course, we, uh, we don't need to rehash all that. Paul was just a little bit off in his timing. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, and don't forget AOC, both have broached the question in recent years with AOC asserting, quote, a scientific consensus that the lives of children are going to be very difficult. Yes. Um, celebrities have already uh, raised the issue. We have Miley Cyrus. There you go. Miley Cyrus. Uh, who would have thunk it? Uh, good for you, Miley. I, I never thought I would be quoting the Doomer chick Miley Cyrus on Collapse Chronicles. Qu 
quote, until I feel like my kid would live on an earth with fish in the water, I am not bringing in another person to deal with that. And uh, talking to Howard Stern, Seth Rogen discussed his decision with his wife to remain childless by choice. Here's what Seth Rogen has to say about it. Quote, there's enough kids out there. We need more people. Who looks at the planet right now and thinks, you know what we need right now? Yes, more people. Look at the planet. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, writers such as New York Times columnist Paul Krugman and Katha Pollitt, the poet and essay, essayist, have also chimed in recently. This was uh, poet Katha Pollitt, quote, Does the world need more people? Not if you ask the glaciers, the rainforest, the air, or the more than 37,400 species on the verge of extinction thanks to the relentless expansion of human beings into every corner and cranny of our overheated planet. So that was actually uh, from a, an essay in The Nation this summer. I'm going to have to look up that and, uh, and make that Sunday's Doomsday Sermon. We're going to have to uh, check out Katha Pollitt's essay in the nation. Uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> while climate change is hardly a new concern, the worsening crisis has forced the issue for many prospective parents said Josephine Ferroli, a founder of Conceivable Future. Yes, uh, an organization that hosts house parties for prospective parents to discuss how climate fears are shaping their reproductive lives. Uh, good for them. Uh... No wonder some people who put off having children to pursue careers or other interests now wonder if the kindest thing for their unborn child is to keep them that way. Now, I don't know where the hell they found this woman. Micah McLaughlin, age 40, uh, from Boulder, Colorado. I, I, she's obviously going to different parties than I'm going to. Of course, I don't. I have not been to a party in uh, about three years. Uh, quote: I literally, I literally cannot go to a dinner party without the collapse of civilization being at least mentioned, if not being the main topic of conversation. I want to go to M Micah. Can I go to one of your parties? Arable land is decreasing around the planet. We might not have enough food. We've lost 80% of the biomass in the ocean in the last century. The ocean is essentially dying, close quote. And uh, so anyway, uh, they talked to Miss McLaughlin. Uh, Anyway, don't forget political strife, both domestically and abroad, is also a factor for some. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I love this person there, you know, waiting to see if Donald Trump is going to be elected. Uh, I, I, I guess... Now we have to wait till 2024. So if Donald Trump gets elected president, that's it. That, that's the final straw. I guess she's getting her tubes tied. Yes. Uh, 
and then uh, they they even talked to some uh, some uh, non heterosexual couples. Anyone who thinks that this is that the, it, it is only straight couples. Uh, They link you over to, th this is pretty cool for the New York Times, I have to go check this out, the Exploring Anti-Natalism Podcast. The Exploring Anti-Natalism Podcast. If you go on this link, you can find the link to that. Uh, that doomsday fears are hardly the only reason that some choose the child-free lifestyle. And, uh, you know, ending, uh, then they go look into the non-doomer reasons with closing the quote, the closing quote from, uh, don't, I guess this woman is in her mid-30s, uh, is now studying for a master's degree in business administration to capitalize on her music career. She said she enjoys a rich and fulfilling life without children. Quote, I have many more things to explore on my journey that do not involve raising another suffering human being on an out-of-supplies planet. <laughs> another suffering human being on an out-of-supplies planet. Uh, anyway, guys, I... I hate to say it, uh, but I am with the Financial Post, and my guess is these clueless moron millennials are uh, are are going to have more and more babies, and uh, you know the, just the very fact that 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 any millennial or bringing a child onto this planet at this point. You know, you know it's completely hopeless. But uh, I've got to wrap this up, and uh, I think it's time to refresh my drink. Uh, come see me in the Point Lonesome Swamp, especially if you're a millennial wanting to build a home on this beautiful piece of land to uh, raise your little planet nibblers. Come talk to me. Bye, guys.